So uh, five years ago, the idea that I'd be giving a talk on traditional Amazonian medicine and a proposed Amazonian clinic in the upper Amazon of Peru would have been, to say the least, unthinkable. Um, I have no uh, historical connection or familiarity with alternative medicine. I'm from New York City, specifically the Upper East Side. My parents were not yoga instructors or acupuncturists. For me, medicine was amoxicillin and uh, healers were general practitioners. And I'm also by nature really quite skeptical. Now I say that to people now and in the context of some of the things that these days I'm heard saying, they react a little bit skeptically to that. But but it's the truth. I really am intellectually skeptical and otherwise by nature. Um, I went down to the Amazon about five years ago for the first time uh, to address some personal issues with which I long struggled. Um, and I went down skeptical but kind of willing to try anything. And uh, when I was there, um, I saw people being treated reliably uh, for things far more serious than anything that I was dealing with, and things that I had previously thought completely untreatable. Um, there was a woman on that first trip suffering from a rare autoimmune disorder. Um, she had been to, she was French, kind of mid-40s, had been to uh, several different hospitals in France where, of course, they have universal care and they don't turn people away on the basis of pay, and they all told her the same thing. They said, you know, we'd love to help you, but we don't even we're not even able to properly diagnose what you have, let alone treat it. And so by the time she got to Peru, she was, and when I met her, we got there around the same time, she was shaking uncontrollably, she had difficulty walking, skin coming off of her place, uh, her, her body in places, kind of her face was a you know, pallid, sunken gray, and terrified. And uh, seemingly, I don't mean to be, this is, really not hyperbolic, seemingly uh, kind of close to death. And um, generally speaking, Amazonian medicine takes, or natural medicine in general, takes quite a while. There's something about autoimmune disorders that's a little bit different. But I was only there for 10 days. And in 10 days, she was a completely and totally different person. And I was shocked. I was completely and totally blown away. Um, and forgive the cliche, but it was, for me and my belief system, something of a paradigm shattering event and I became resolved to do something. Uh, I, you know, I felt that M is based on what I'd seen Amazonian medicine should really become a, a central pillar of healing on the planet alongside not only Western medicine, which obviously has lots to say for it. Also Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, which have uh, pretty well developed uh, uh, institutional existences on, on the planet. And, and the idea, um, which was fleshed out over the period of time that followed, was to create a clinic uh, in, the, in the Amazon, which would practice, study, and aim to preserve uh, traditional Amazonian plant medicine inside of a Western framework uh, with medical doctors, uh, uh, clinical psychologists, nursing staff, emergency care, the, the, whole, the whole bit. Um, so, uh, of course, I knew, because of my own historic skepticism, just how difficult this was going to be. Um, if somebody had suggested this to the me of five years ago, had I not seen what I had seen myself, I would have regarded it as completely crazy. Um, so, just to sort of illustrate that, uh, an early fundraising meeting, and when I really embarked upon this, I had really no idea where to start. So I just went to some well-off friends and family and, and made my pitch. And I remember in this one early meeting, I made this impassioned plea. I said, you know, I've just been back from the Amazon and you just cannot imagine what these plants can do and what I've seen with my own eyes. And I went into the whole idea of the clinic and we're going to revolutionize medicine. And, and, and my feeling at the time was this was sort of the you know, the, the greatest unkept secret uh, around alternative medicine where grave and chronic illness were concerned and letting someone else in on that secret, I couldn't imagine that they would respond to anything 
but you know, how can I help? You know, what can I do? And I, I remember the response was, yeah, really, Luke, so you want to build a shaman hospital <laughs> in Peru. Um, so I knew that my work was really cut out for me and with the kind of, you know, if you build it, they will come kind of an attitude. I went back, flushed out the vision further intellectually with uh, some of the healers and curanderos in the region, um, built the kind of intellectual foundation for it. Um, and then in the first stroke of serendipity for the project, um, a company that some of you might be familiar with just in the impact investing space, Runa, uh, on whose board I sit and the CEO is you know, probably my closest friend. And, um, and, and unlike me, he has, just Tyler Gage, has some clue how to build things in the Amazon, which of course, which of course I don't. And unlike most of the people I talked to, he was actually fairly uh, easy to convince of the veracity of what I was saying, which was refreshing. Um, so uh, with Tyler on board, which changed things pretty dramatically, um, we set about building a team, uh, purchasing land, uh, putting together a medical advisory board, which in today includes Andrew Weil and doctors and medical professionals from Yale, the VA, uh, Stanford, among others. Um, and, and then, of course, with the uh, building of all that infrastructure came expenses, which at that point in time I was largely footing myself. And and getting kind of stressed out about it because it was pretty clear we were making progress, but certainly I was not in a position to uh, fund the totality of what needed funding. And so someone else was really going to have to step up. And in the, I'd say, second big stroke of serendipity that befell the project, uh, someone known to us through kind of the Runa network with whom we'd build a lot of credibility and goodwill came forward with our our first really significant outside donation. And in that moment, that day, it was clear really for the first time that this kind of wacky vision was actually going to manifest. Um, following that, we, uh, and, and just, just to speak to that for one moment, I, I have to say that the, the giddiness and awe that, that came that day really year and a half or almost two years later at this point really still remains. Um, subsequently, we found support in uh, Channing Tatum and his partner, Reed Carolyn, um, who uh, also went to the Amazon, saw some similar things to what I saw and reacted somewhat similar that in the form of a real call to action and a responsibility to, to take this knowledge and, and, and share it. And they teamed up. Uh, we've created this uh, kind of combined organization under the heading Plant Med, uh, which also involves CrowdRise and, and all those organizations. Um, we intend, we're, construction is slated to begin uh, October 15th, so just literally in eight days. Um, and we're beginning a full fledged crowdfunding campaign. Uh, events kind of across the country and you know we have we have funds to get through the first iteration of construction all this is a very long-term project um, just I'd say the one takeaway for me in this whole process is I'm generally speaking quite easily discouraged um, I uh, if something doesn't immediately go the way I want it to I'm often just inclined to kind of walk away and, and this required a completely opposite approach. And um, so really it's if, you know, you really believe in what you're doing, or, you know, speaking just for myself, uh, I need to give serendipity uh, the time to work, if that makes any sense. Um, so I hope um, some of you this message will resonate with and will help us in some way to continue this streak of serendipity that we've been lucky enough to, to have befall this project. Um, and uh, thank you very much for listening and thanks for your time.